Greetings to everybody out there in the YouTube world. How are ya? It's gonna be a special video for me. This one is for one of my favorite YouTubers, Brian Davis. So he requested this game in my uh, request of vlog. And he did not request this shout out, but I am giving it to him nonetheless. If you don't know of him, there was a point in time when he had over 300 subscribers. Through an action that I'm sure he regrets, uh, he deleted that channel. He has come back uh, several times uh, and you know, made videos for a while and deleted that channel. Started another one, deleted that channel. He has not been happy with the progress of his channels, I guess. Um, I say take it slowly and you'll get back to where you were, but uh, anyway, this is for Brian Davis. I would really love for you guys to go and check him out and subscribe if you like his style. He's got a very, very, very funny self-deprecating kind of humor to him. I happen to absolutely love it. And as we speak right now, uh, I happen to be one of his only four subscribers. And uh, only a week ago he only had me, so. <laughs> this guy used to have 300 subscribers, I'm telling you, like this, he deserves more. If you have, please check him out and, you know, exit out of this video if you want. If you can only watch one video or the other, choose his. I'm also making this video for everybody that used to be subscribed to him. All the 300 plus people that used to be subscribed to Brian, you can come here. And if, if, if as long as I know where the hell he's at, if he's created a new channel, if he's deleted the other one, I will update any information that is in this video for you guys so you can find him again. As long as I know where he's at. So... Come back to this video if you ever need to find him. He's a little sketchy. <laughs> like so many creative people, you know, a little eccentric. So he deletes his channel sometimes. I think he regrets it, but listen, it's it's worth it. It's worth like he's really good at the games. He really uh, practices them. He's got some good commentary, and uh, he's just he's a good person. I gotta say. So if you want to give him a shot, please do. This is a prehistoric tale. Requested by the YouTuber Brian Davis. Link in the description. Link all over the place. Give him a try. As you listen to some of this fan fucking fantastic background music, let me uh, just tell you when he requested this video, I had no idea what the hell it was. I had to look it up, and <laughs> once I looked it up, I knew what it was. <laughs> what you are about to witness is one of the most blatant uh, ripoffs of another game I have ever seen. Actually, it's, this is a utter ripoff of. Probably not that well known of a game on the Commodore 64 called Dino Eggs, which was a favorite of mine forever. And I, yeah, my sister used to love that one too. Uh, that was one of her favorites back when she used to play the Commodore 64. When I first got into emulating, because I, I only have like one memory of the Commodore 64 of playing it, really, before I destroyed it accidentally as a kid. And then my dad used that as an excuse to get the Amiga. What a good, what a good excuse. You have me to thank for that. But, uh, yeah, I only have one memory of it. <laughs> it's of a fucking Barbie game that my sister used to make me play. <laughs> it's the only real life memory I have of the real Commodore 64 in action. Because uh, I was so fucking young. <clears throat> and I remember the Amiga when I was like nothing. I was like one, two years old or whatever. I was two years old. When we got the Amiga, I remember that stuff. I don't remember the Commodore 64 except for that Barbie game. Maybe I'll show that at some point. When I got into emulation, I, I gave my sister a call. And I'm like, what games do you remember on the Commodore 64 that you loved or whatever? And she rattled off a few of them like Load Runner. Dino Eggs was like number two on the list. And uh, so I got Dino and I, I fucking put that in the emulator and oh my god, was it an awesome game. It's, it's an awesome game, period, but it's especially an awesome game for a kid to play. And, uh, this is... This is Dino Eggs, everybody. This is Dino Eggs for the Amiga, called A Prehistoric Tale. I don't know if he gives credit to Dino Eggs at any point. I did look it up or something. Somebody said that he gave credit to it. I didn't actually see any credit to Dino Eggs in any of the, uh, stuff for this game here. Not in the game itself, anyway. This is, this is essentially Dino Eggs. Everything about it is Dino Eggs, except for like these little bonus kind of things. Like, you know, it's got little things after the level goes there, or whatever. It's got some fantastic music, which Dino Eggs does not have. And I guess we're not playing as Mr. Time Master Tim, we're playing as this beefed up guy here. So how does this game compare to Dino Eggs? Well, well let me first start off by explaining 
some of the mechanics. I just picked up a mouse. Now we can release that mouse. What does that mouse do? I'm not fucking sure, actually. I don't know. First I thought it was an enemy. It's not an enemy. Uh, you used to be able to make fires. You used to create logs and then you know, combine them with another log in uh, dino eggs. And you'd create a fire which would stop um, dino mother from coming down and she would like put her foot down and she could squash you and kill you or whatever. And if you didn't have that fire, she would do that and it would essentially kill you. I'm not sure if the mouse is similar to that. Maybe it is because there are like locusts that can come. I don't know if the mouse stops them or not. But uh, yeah, I'm not... Essentially, I'm not sure what the fuck the mouse does, unfortunately, but we have eggs scattered across the level. We can pick up three at maximum normally. When you pick up those three eggs, find your way back to that portal that you start off from. And go into it. And press the, uh, I think down button and fire button at the same time, and you will be transported to another area of the screen where you'll start your journey again. Get three eggs maximum, normally, unless you find in this game a little battery thing. It looks like a battery to me. It looks like a Duracell. If you pick that battery up, you will be able to uh, carry un an unlimited supply of eggs. So uh, as long as you can pick them all up in one go and get some, you know, score some more points there. But normally, only three eggs at a time before you have to find the portal. You might want to go to the portal sooner because if you get yourself hit by anything, a dinosaur or a spider, or whatever, or put yourself into a, like, a little trap of some sort, your health will go rapidly down, and the only way you can cure that is to find the portal as quickly as possible and wait till the health goes back to 99%. Yes, the eggs will start to hatch eventually, and uh, then you can jump over the little dinosaur that hatches, and you actually get a lot more bonus if you actually get that, but then you actually have to uh, capture those dinosaurs in order to complete the level. Now, normally you have to have all the dino eggs. You can still leave the level at any point, but you will get penalized for it. You might lose a life if you don't if you have not captured all the eggs. But uh, I think you could essentially just wait until all the eggs hatch by themselves and leave the level, and you would complete it successfully. So you don't actually have to uh, get the little dinosaurs when they hatch, but you will get a lot more bonus points. If you do, it's very easy in this game to accidentally hit the dinosaurs and uh, you know, contaminate yourself and have to go back to the portal. There's no story in this, but the original Dino Eggs had story, so I'm just adding in some of it. Yeah, like, you somehow found yourself in the past, and you have to get yourself out. You have to save all these dinosaurs, but you can't contaminate yourself by touching anything. And the only way to save yourself is by going back to the portal. So I, that's essentially the story we're going with here. Now, perhaps some of you may have noticed that I'm presenting this game in widescreen mode. I don't know if you guys have noticed that or not, but I have definitely gone on about all these games back in the day being meant to be in 4-3 square mode for old televisions. And uh, here it is in widescreen. Now, why did I do that? Well, there is a good reason for that. Now, this is a 320 by 200 resolution game. And most of the 320 by 200 resolution games I've covered so far have been games designed in America for NTSC, you know, Amigas. And those are meant to be in 4.3, absolutely. Usually PAL games designed in Europe were 320 by 256. They had extra resolution based on their video hardware. And you may have noticed that the very, very first screen I showed of this game was in 320 by 256. It was in 4.3. But uh, they, they did that one intro screen in 4.3, 320 by 256, but the entire rest of the game is in 320 by 200. Normally, Europeans would do this to uh, make it NTSC compatible, to make it easier to be NTSC compatible. I'm not sure why they did it in this case, because uh, I tried this game in NTSC mode, just to see what it would look like. Because I always try them both, just to see, you know, compare them and see which one looks right. Because I don't like distorted images. Uh, I like to see what was originally intended. And this game will not run in NTSC mode, and it's actually not because of that one screen in the beginning that is in PAL 320 by 256 It actually will play that screen, but then as soon as it's supposed to go to the title screen, it just dies. It crashes. It won't play the 320 by 200 game, so I don't know why they even bothered putting this in 320 by 200 uh, It could have gone 320 by 256 It's not like it's a memory-intensive game or anything. 
But uh, yeah, I don't know why, but this is designed in Europe to in 320 by 200, and the Europeans, when they had 320 by 200 games, would have seen it wide screen. <clears throat> Even though, for I'm telling you, 80% of the games at least were made with NTSC machines in mind, and every NTSC user had them filling their entire screen stretch. The 320 by 200 technically wide screen, but it was meant to be stretched into a square in, as all old monitors and televisions were. So, yeah, normally I try to show these in 4.3 uh, because that's how they were supposed to be. In this case, this European design game would have been designed in this weird, weird aspect ratio. And I say weird because you might notice that there is some black bars on the left and right of the screen. It's very tiny, so it's not like it's not 16 by 9 aspect. It's not any true aspect ratio because this it was never designed. Like the Amiga in America was never designed to be looked at this way in widescreen mode. It was never supposed to be. 320 by 200 is not a real aspect ratio. Uh, it will not fit with any any aspect ratio you look up, which should be a true slap in the face to any Europeans that really do think that these games are supposed to look like this. Normally, like the American games they think are supposed to look like this, which they are not. You know, that should be a true slap in the face because it doesn't match with any aspect ratio. There are games that aren't in full screen, that, that are actually designed in widescreen, even in 320 by 200 in 4.3. Like Wing Commander, Wing Commander, the uh, the dialogue scenes are in widescreen, but that's an, an actual true aspect ratio, like the movies or whatever. Like if you, if, you, if we were to crop the Wing Commander dialogue scenes, it would be in 16 by 9. You know, it's like perfect aspect ratio, you know, because it was designed that way. Anyway, I'm not going to get into it any more than that. Just to say that this is a game, one of the few games that would have been designed in 320 by 200 to look correct in this widescreen type of mode. <clears throat> anyway, now we uh, face another bonus area. We had one other bonus area before that I did not mention, but we were just collecting all the eggs as fast as we can. Here we are on a pogo stick collecting eggs and uh, trying not to make them splat against the ground, which I just did there. You'll need a very good joystick for this. Uh, I don't... even a gamepad. I don't know how good a gamepad would be. Like, these are very tight controls right here. I have a great tactile functioning joystick here, which helps me for these uh, types of things. And these are actually very fun additions to the game. Again, this... this kind of thing is not in dino eggs. But this is new to pre a prehistoric tale and I have to say so far so far in this game it has impressed me very much and it's you, you think from so far that it's actually better than dino eggs because it's got so many more features it's got fantastic music the entire way and it's got some digital sound effects and everything you know, like, like they seem to have uh, they seem to be on their game here and once you've once you see one of these uh, bonus levels that are kind of different than the entire game, like that last one, uh, once you complete that, it actually changes the palette and changes the outfits a little bit. So we we are now in a different looking, it's a lot more purplish now. So uh, the game has changed a little after that bonus stage to give us a little bit more of a scenery change. And uh, that, again, that's a nice thing. I think it happened a little bit more in Dino Eggs. The color palettes would change a little more there, but... Uh, Again, this is a welcome thing, but here is where the game actually starts to let you down a little bit, and you uh, decide that no, it's not as good as Dino Eggs. It's like here, uh, we're trying to figure out where the hell we're supposed to go. We have these vines. These vines are acting as ladders, but these, uh, they don't go everywhere. The vines can't be climbed in every direction, just the ones with little, uh, things sprouting out from the left and right. Those are the only ones that can be uh, climbed, so here we are, just here, and we got a couple tele- sometimes they'll put a teleporter there, so it's not absolutely impossible. But I'm telling you, this game will get to the point where it will be impossible to complete the level. This did not happen in Dino Lake. Sometimes you could get yourself in a corner if you did not plan correctly from the start, but I'm telling you, this game itself will put you in situations where you have no hope, where you can't plan it from the 
start where if the game where the it's just the level's impossible. And uh, yeah, that's where frustration starts to uh, set in. But I don't think I've gotten to that point quite yet. I'm still having fun uh, what you see here. You know, definitely the dinosaurs are getting released faster. Things are happening. Anyway, but I, I decided, you know, fuck all the rest of the dinosaurs. I'm getting out of this level. So we've completed level 11. We're going on to the next one. And we've introduced another mechanic here. Now we have floating uh, platforms. Again, like, yeah, I'm not mad at the way this thing introduces things. Uh, yeah, this is good stuff to add slowly to the game. It makes it interesting. I'm still happy, kind of, with the game, but I think it's wearing on me a little bit at this point, 12 levels in. I'm going to skip ahead a little bit. In this next level here, we're presented with a thousand teleporters. And, uh, and every space in between those teleporters will make you fall through, so again, this is more puzzle-oriented, which is fine to have puzzle elements in it, but... Oh, those teleporters. I'm, I'm starting to get frustrated 12 levels into the game. I'm just getting... I'm not, not even frustration. I'm just getting, I think, bored with the game. So we have all these things, and yeah, I go there. So I gotta go to the next one, and then I fall down. I'm like, okay. There you go. So I gotta jump, and then I jump. Oh, whatever. I still haven't figured it out. Finally, I jump, and I missed it. That one was my fault there. Yeah, it's these kinds of little things, and then you go into the teleporter, and you get go to a place you don't want to go. I want to go to the top. I have to get that final little dino egg thing, boulder thing, at the top, and I finally get there, but there's a dinosaur on, so I'm immediately going to get hit, and I'm dead. Like, this is the kind of stuff that makes you start not to like a game. And then, whatever, the game levels over, so we go on to the next one. This level, it keeps the same type of design going. Lots and lots of hoverboards. Really, only one place you can start is the teleporter. You know, there's nowhere to climb up. These vines are useless to me. I have to go to a teleporter of some sort. At the end of the teleporter. But in order to get the teleporter, I can't just, like, drop onto it. No. I have to use these hoverboards, so... I have to climb up this one vine that can be climbed up and get onto the hoverboard. So we're waiting here. Hoping we can finally get onto the fucking thing. We finally get onto one. Uh, now what? I don't know. What do we do now? We can get one egg. Wow. And we have matched... Oh, yeah. You can get to the teleporter through the other side. So now we're on top. And yeah, everything here on this level could be figured out, I'm sure. But, you know, there's so many hazards. My health is going down. It takes so long to do anything. I've accidentally hit another guy, so my health is going down further. And so you, and you got to start all over again. And uh, once you get that health up, and you get into that teleporter, and you teleport yourself somewhere else, it puts you somewhere where, you know, it doesn't help you out that much. <laughs> and yeah, this is definitely where the game becomes not as good as Dino Eggs. Because Dino Eggs does increase the challenge along the way. But this, this is not, not even frustrating, it's just, it's boring. The challenge is boring. It can all be figured out, but it, it's not... It's presented you, to you in a way that does not make you want to continue with the game. Now we see our first uh, pterodactyl attack, or whatever the hell these things are. They're being attacked in the sky. Maybe I'm... Yeah. I don't have a mouse on the screen, so I bet you that mouse does uh, keep these things away for some reason. I don't know. I can understand the fire keeping the uh, dino mom away, but uh, I don't see how a mouse would keep these flying things away. But, uh, apparently that's the thing. Anyway, I, at this point, I have given up. There are still things on the screen, and I'm like, oh, this is ridiculous. And I just go to the next level, and it says, eggs not collected, we lose a life. And uh, again, <laughs> damn, this, this vine thing, I've had enough of. I'm done with the vines, please. A new mechanic. So we can't climb all the vines again. We have to climb up some of them and then jump over to another one or jump over to a board. This is this is getting on my nerves. I'm not liking the game mechanics anymore because I keep falling. I, it's not it's not it's not fun anymore. Regardless of any puzzle-solving elements, I don't want to solve the puzzles which can be solved. 
here so far, and I don't want to. I'm aboard. So get ready. So finally, at level 20, we get a very uh, get ready German-sounding English there. Get ready. Get ready. We're getting ready. And we have a new bonus area. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what the fuck they're saying. <laughs> Shadows knows. What are they saying? I think this is German. So what are they saying? Oh no. I, I don't know what they're saying. <laughs> Again, you will need a good joystick for this. Even, game pads are not very good with the uh, targeting. I, I need a good, very functioning tactile joystick for this scene here. This is fun. I like this scene for some reason. <laughs> it needed. I was getting so sick and tired of the purple thing. This is level 20, by the way, and I, I was getting so tired of the last motif that I was really needing this uh, change of pace here. So this is fun. I'm having fun. Shooting things. Yes. And I think... Yeah, I don't think I missed anything. It was a perfect, perfect run there. So I, yeah, I earned some points. Yay! Loading and crunching. Listen to that. Can you hear that? Yeah. Oh, I love the Amiga disk drive when it's doing its thing. Anyway, so we have a new uh, area to explore, new uh, color palette, new look, and uh, yeah. So far, I'm happy with it. Yay. I don't know. Am I? Am I truly happy with it? Oh, no. We fall through. And we're dying. So, what are we going to do? We climb up the tree. That's our thing. And, uh, yeah, we're going to have to jump. Make some long jumps to get over to that portal. Restore our health. Again, I made that jump. I couldn't make it. So, yeah. Some of these. Very perfect timings that you gotta make. I'm not happy with. But, uh, I don't know. I think I, so far, I'm happy because I have a new look. And I'm happy with that. But again, the level came down to a few eggs being left and me just not giving a damn anymore. And I intentionally lost a life to go on to the next level. And you, you know, I have plenty of lives, so, uh, I don't care. <laughs> I do end up finishing this particular level on my own, legitimately, even though I killed a lot of dinosaurs accidentally on the way, and uh, as we get pelted by rocks, we're out, and we're not going to lose a life this time, because I did collect all the eggs. Ha! But as we start level 23 here, uh, it's over. I, I, I've decided I'm done. <clears throat> I, I start out which, at first, and then the portal puts me somewhere. Fuck you, fuck you, portal. Why don't you put me somewhere I want to be? Anyway, it starts out easy enough. And this this one could have been completed by me, but at this point, I, I've just had enough. I don't really care. I collect them, I'm starting, and then I fall into the spikes, and I'm like, oh, fuck you. And as soon as you get into the spikes, you're dead. It just, your health loses too fast. So I collected almost, over half of the eggs. And I fall into the pit, and die, and I just, I've had enough. I, you know, and now I can only hold three again. Going all the way down, I'm getting swatted by the fucking pterodactyls. And, uh, yeah, I, I decided, fuck it. I, yeah, I did that on purpose. I'm done. I decided to kill myself. I'm done with this game. I go over and I do it again. I, yeah, it's like, and I could have like this game has 80 levels. Everybody, I'm at 23, and I had to kill myself over and over and over and over again. I probably could have made it to the end. Uh, yeah, I just, I didn't want to. I didn't want to finish this one. Uh, yeah, I don't like it. I mean, I, I do, I do, I like it. It's Dino Eggs on the Amiga, and I do like it, and I will play it again. But. Uh, it's not better than Dino Eggs. It's not. It is a ripoff. It, it, it betters Dino Eggs in some ways, but it's in gameplay. I don't think it's better. That's the most important part, after all. Gameplay. I don't. Graphics are secondary. Music is secondary to gameplay. And this one, it's bad at the gameplay. It gets boring, and it's not hard. You can figure it all out. I'm sure you can all win this one if you want to. 
but uh, it's boring. It gets boring. It's very fun to start with. So, and God, look at all these lives I had. I just have to keep killing myself over and over again. I just, all those lives I've accumulated. So I, I could have, uh, I could have easily gone into uh, the next area if I wanted to, just by intentionally going into the portal, losing a life, going to the next level. But yeah, I don't want to. I, this is. I've had enough of this game at this point, so it's fun for a while. It does not keep your attention. Yeah. Yeah, this one is not one that keeps your attention, so... But it, I think it's worth playing, everybody. Uh, yeah, give it a try, if only to play Dino Eggs on the Amiga and Dino Eggs. If you haven't played Dino Eggs on the Commodore 64, play Dino Eggs on the Commodore 64. Fantastic game. So this is the end screen. I guess for the bad ending, anyway. Dinosaurs. On the ground, dead. I don't know what's with the uh, explosion-ish kind of thing. Have we exploded? Has the asteroid hit us? I don't understand this part. I don't understand the fiery sky. It's a nice picture, though. It's a very good-looking picture. Very beautiful picture. Anyway, that's uh, the end of Dino Eggs. As far as I'm willing to go at this moment, anyway. First my first time playing it, so yeah. I, I did pretty impressive for my first time playing it, and overall I would rate it good enough to have, probably not good enough to want to finish, but a good game. Requested by the great Brian Davis. I really wish you guys will check him out. I will forego my usual whoring of my own videos in uh, hope that you will instead check out Brian Davis's channel. Again, I've been... Uh, I subscribed to him ever since I think Jim Plays Games uh, shot at him out a very long time ago. And uh, Jim's a good guy, and uh, yeah. He makes good videos. He knows what he's talking about. Brian is a good guy. I hope you guys will check him out. Very, very funny. It's a different kind of funny. It kind of, it's a funny that kind of pulls at your emotional heartstrings. Because, well, he, uh, like, he's very self deprecating, but it's from a, almost a very truthful kind of perspective. Like, he, I think he does kind of feel that he's not the greatest in the world, which he's a lot better than he thinks he is. But it, it really, because you hear it, and it's funny, it's immediately funny to you, but then you realize he means it, and it kind of, like, pulls at you. And it's a really unique perspective. He's really worth checking out. Please check out Brian Davis's channel. Link right there. Hopefully, it'll show up. Link in the description, if not. Check him out. If he uh, deletes his channel again, I'll update the information. He's really worth checking out as you listen to this fantastic music. Oh, oh, the music in this game. It's worth it having just for the music. See you guys later. Bye.